All right, sometimes in chemistry, we discover a molecule or a class of molecules that seems too good to be true. In the case of PFAS, molecules within this class have been used to solve some of the world's most complex challenges because of the unique combination of properties that they have. For example, PFAS are exceptionally stable and have excellent chemical resistance, which makes them great for harsh environments. In the world of cleaning, adding PFAS to a formulation can significantly reduce its surface tension, allowing it to get under even the smallest standoff components to ensure cleanliness. Today, I have a special guest with me to help us understand more about PFAS, why regulations are phasing them out, and what the future of PFAS-free cleaning chemistry holds for us. All right, so today I'm excited to introduce Kaizen's very own Ram Whistle, uh, the Vice President of Global Technology, here to talk to us about his favorite four-letter acronym, PFAS. Thanks, Adam. It's a pleasure to be here today. And PFAS is something that's been close to my heart for a couple of years. It, it's, a tr it's, it's really an acronym for poly or perfluoroalkyl substances. It's a bit of a tongue twister. So PFAS is a lot easier to say. But, you know, what is it? It's not a chemistry or a chemical. It's really a group of these organofluorine compounds. And depending on what you're looking at, there may be a list of 5,000 or 10,000 or 15,000. The EPA actually identifies 13 or 1,364 materials today um, as PFAS materials that they're, that they're worried about. But that definition can change a little bit. Okay. So what can you tell me about their stability and why that might be a concern? Well, the, the thing that you hear along with PFAS materials is the, the term forever chemicals. Mm -hmm. And the, the challenge there is that they, they're really stable, the, these... Um, Carbon fluorine bonds are some of the strongest in organic chemistry. And so these molecules just don't break down very much. And so they tend to stay around for a long time. What that means is it can get into the groundwater, gets into the groundwater or into the waste. The waste. It can work its way into uh, land, into water streams, into food. Uh -huh. There's actually been 12 different types of PFAS detected in the human bloodstream. And so the, the, this concept of bioaccumulation over time, you know, getting these chemicals in your, into humans or into our food source is not good. And so a lot of regulation right now is being focused on you know, eliminating or restricting the use of these PFAS materials. Okay. So do I use PFAS? Absolutely. You know, actually, you know, you think back to a lot of the materials that were um, like a Scotchgard, a waterproofing. Right. Um, or, you know, you think about the old Teflon coatings on your pans. You know, a lot of things are ceramic now. Um, but there's a lot of materials, even, uh, like popcorn bags, you know, you will use sometimes a PFAS like material to make sure that the, it's that waxy coating so that oils don't get into it. Mm -hmm. Uh, makeup, lots, lots of everyday uses get in there. We use these PFAS materials. Okay. So what do these new regulations, uh, mean for the future of cleaning chemistry? Well, great question. You, it, it, it's really about material availability and what can, what we can use. And you mentioned earlier, starting out. You know, surface tension, making sure that these solvents, these materials have re can get underneath and, and penetrate in, into tight spaces for cleaning. Um, when you think of, you know, there, a couple of years ago, there was an announcement from 3M where they were discontinuing their Novec line of fluids, which has really been, you know, earth shattering or ground shaking in uh, a lot of the solvent, uh, clean, for solvent cleaning. Mm -hmm. uh, you're looking for alternatives, you know, and, and it's nothing new. You know, these regulations have always been evolving. You think back to 1987 and the Montreal Protocol, where you had CFCs putting holes in the ozone layer. You know, that was just the start of this line of H or CFCs going to H or CF, HCFCs to HFEs to, to now HFOs. These are things that are just, um, as we get smarter about chemistry and we learn what tends to stay around, like your hamburgers used to be, um, you don't have the gray hair that I have, but you used to be able to get a Big Mac in uh, styrofoam. You know, the styrofoam containers don't are in a route okay. because they would stay around for a long time. These PFAS materials are like that. They're they're changing the regulations so that they, uh, you know, the, so that they're phased out. All right. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to share with us this information. Uh, and for the viewers, um, thank you for, for tuning in. If you like that content, make sure to hit the like button uh, and subscribe. Uh, if you want to be notified of future episodes, make sure to click that bell icon. Also, if you have any questions about PFAS, Please uh, make sure you leave them in the comments below, or you can send an email to askdradam at kaizen.com. 
Thanks again and stay clean.